Hello, fearless entrepreneurs. Welcome to another episode of Fire Your Boss Fridays. I'm your host, Chad, and with me is my wonderful wife, Lisa. And today we have a remarkable guest who will ignite your entrepreneur spirit, hopefully, and she'll help you maybe uh, make that transition, help you steal your life back. Natasha Christine, uh, hopefully I'm saying that right. She's a, tw it says here though that you're a 20 plus year entrepreneur. Yes. Okay. I'll dig into that in a minute. <laughs> and you're the founder of Natasha Christine Coaching. And she's here to share not only her journey, but maybe some, some tips that will help you guys navigate the transition. She's a work at home mom and she, or, or she was originally making about $2,000 a month. And then she transferred that into a six figure income while working part time. And that's what we're going to dig into today. And that's what we're interested in hearing. So to hopefully empower all you listeners out there that are looking to ditch the nine to five and literally fire your boss, say hi to our audience, Natasha. Can you tell us how you went from a work at home mom to a guest on a podcast called Fire Your Boss Fridays? <laughs> That is a great question. And that's a very, there's so many nuance to that story. I mean, you tell me, where would you, what part would you like me to start with? Cause I okay, could talk. So you, you, <laughs> you're day. on a podcast now and you've been through a major transition. What was the timeline? Like how long was this journey for you? Oh, well, I have been self-employed since I was 12 years old. So I've never actually had a job. Um, I have run my own business since I was a kid. Uh, so when 20 plus year entrepreneur, it means ah, I have, that's where it came from. Yeah. yeah. I have run my own business for 20 plus years, but there were many, many days when I would have prayed to have a job because as we know, being an entrepreneur is not always as sexy and glamorous and fun as they make it out right. to be. And I think that's an important, who, who I think that's they, an Natasha, who are these <laughs> days, right? These are the gurus online. I think, and... Yeah. I, I think there are so many people who romanticize the entrepreneur life without talking about the downside, right? right? Mm -hmm. And I think that creates a very unrealistic picture of what it's like to be an entrepreneur. And, and I think any entrepreneur, if we're honest about it, I mean, if I can just be completely direct, there are days when we're like, would pray to have a union job and someone making the decisions and paying the bills. And I mean, it's like well, those kind of those days the come, but those days come and go too. They do come and go. <laughs> exactly. They do come and go. But I'm just saying, like, I think a lot of people, when they think about entrepreneurship, they, they see what's on TikTok or they see what's on Instagram mm -hmm. and, and no, and not as many people talk about the real reality of what it's like right, to run a right. business. I think, let me create some clarification for our listeners here. And thank you for bringing mm -hmm. this up. Yes, it, it, it is hard. Here's the difference though, that I have always come back to internally. You're mm -hmm. not going to double your union income job. If you put in double the work next year, mm -hmm. you're not going to triple your union job. It's not, that's the difference. Okay. The upside. Okay. The work might yeah. be the same. The work might be you know, twice as much, it might be way more than you can handle, but you have the potential for a, a, a tremendous upside. And that's why we're doing it. We want exactly. the potential. We want something exactly. with no ceiling. Like we can just keep on going. Is that, exactly. does that resonate with you, Natasha? hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. And that's the reason why I've never had a job is because I knew I couldn't make what I could make. Like I had no choice. Like I, I could not afford to have a job. And that's what sort of kept me in the business world because no one would pay me as much as I could pay myself. Yeah. Maximizing and, um, your time too. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I've got to hear about this 12 year old, like what, what did you start doing? Like, and what, how did you, did your parents encourage that or how did that go down? Um, I grew up in a very like lower income family. Um, uh, we, we were one of those, like the church gives you Christmas dinner families. Mm -hmm. My parents constantly fought about money. I mean, I grew up in a really, like if I wanted to buy clothes, that's why I started working. When I was 12 years old because no one was going to buy me new clothes. Like I, if I wanted clothes, I was on my own. I had to go like mm -hmm. figure out how to make the money to buy my own clothes. And I'm one of six siblings. So it was, there was six of us. So it wasn't just oh, wow. me. And, and I, and so I knew like, if I wanted anything other than hand-me-downs from my neighbors, I was going to have to figure out how to get some cash. Right. Mm -hmm. So I started with five younger siblings. I started, I was a babysitter and people loved me. Right. Cause I came like pre-trained. I, <laughs> I had, uh, I knew exactly what to do. I knew how to change diapers. I knew how to like set boundaries. I knew how to cook dinner. I knew how to like all that stuff. So I was like a killer babysitter. And so I made lots of money and I, um, 
yeah, I was booked like solid, like weeks in advance. So wow. Yeah, I started as a babysitter. Yeah. That's cool. Nice, nice play. Love it. Love it. Yeah. It reminds me of me mowing lawns. Like you just <laughs> once I realized I could trade my time for this money, I was like, I'm in. I did it. Done. Yeah. Done. Well, what about working for your parents? See, in your case, you didn't get you couldn't like do chores and make more money like some people like for me, I could do chores and like, oh, mm -hmm. mom, I'll clean out the garage or I'll, I'll, I'll move all yeah. that stuff in the basement for you and make a few bucks. But what I learned is that I tapped them out too. There was a time <laughs> where I'd say like, I, I want to do this and that. They're like, yeah, we actually can't afford it. Yeah. You anyway, my parents so never paid me. I didn't make any money working for my parents. It was all like, I had my clientele. Like it was, my, yeah. yeah, like it was not my, I didn't get paid to watch my siblings. Like that was not an option. <laughs> so, were your siblings jealous that you were bringing home some dough or what? I don't know. Like all my, honestly, out of six of us, like four of us run our own businesses. So I think wow. we all, yeah. I just think like in rebellion to that situation, mm -hmm. um, we all decided like, no, like we all yeah. became very scrappy, you know? Yeah. And, and, and that's like the trick is, I mean, there's so many times I'm resentful of how I grew up. Um, but on the other hand, we all became incredibly scrappy, incredibly resourceful. I was going to say that word resourceful. That's the, that's what happens. Yeah. 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 And, and unfortunately you have to go like, it's like, it's like a trauma response. You know, some people ask me like, <clears throat> like, excuse me, like my partner, he's like union job guy, you know? Mm -hmm. And he looks at me like, like I'm on drugs. Cause he's like, what is wrong with you? Like, and, and cause he doesn't understand. He's never run his own business. He doesn't mm -hmm. get it that you don't just turn it off in your mind. Right. And so sometimes he's jealous. He's like, I wish I was brave like you. I wish I could do what you do. And mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, but this is a result of growing up with sometimes not knowing, like we're having, we're going to have hot dogs for dinner again. You know, like this is not, well, not maybe more now, but before this was not out of joy of the creative process. Like this was like, you've got to, you want clothes? It's you some want to direct your... reflection of, yeah, like there's yeah. just, yeah, like, like you said, you want to go to your grad, you want to go to your own graduation, you want to buy a dress. Well, that's on you. No one's paying the bills for you. Yeah. Like, you know, you, ha and, and that, like, I remember feeling very resentful, like not thinking, I never crossed my mind to ask my parents for money because I knew they didn't have any. So like, yeah. you just know you're on your own, right? Mm -hmm. Like university, I'm on my own. No one's got my back. There's no RESP. There's no education plan for me. There's nothing. That reminds so, me. Yeah. The education, right? So did, did you end up going to school or? Uh... Um, I had a scholarship. <clears throat> I was very academic. I'm academic. I'm act academically very strong. Um, that doesn't equal money, but I was, mm -hmm. I had a full academic scholarship to university. Um, but after two years, I was like, this is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, can, I was can, out. Can I ask I you a personal done. question? Yeah. So I, cause you sound like the per perfect, perfect person for this question. <laughs> um, sorry, I couldn't barely say that. But so with my daughter, when she started high school, I said, listen, uh, just so you know, like I'm willing to pay for some of your schooling, but yeah. realistically right now as a high school student, you are essentially in control of your future right now. Like yeah. you could make more money just getting good grades and getting a scholarship than yeah. you could at any part-time job after high school trying to go to college. Second yeah. thing was if you go to concurrent enrollment now, you actually can get college credits, which normally would cost you 10, 20 K if I'm not mistaken, yeah. but for a couple hundred bucks. Right. And yeah. so we used to, we, I would joke and see someone like on the street homeless, pushing a grocery basket. I said, why don't we stop and ask them if they went to concurrent enrollment? <laughs> exactly. Just, just to, like, well, you, exactly. that's not where you want to end up. And so anyway, it's, I know it's a horrible thing to do, but I'm trying to set yeah. the precedence for her that like, you yeah. know, you're in control of this, which you were Natasha, like you, yeah. You had to, but for me, I, I'm, you know, I'm telling her like, you know, not, I'm not paying for your school, especially if you don't go to concurrent enrollment, mm -hmm. right? If you don't choose to like save me money, why am I spending it on you? You know, you have to <laughs> get, that. this is for you, not for me. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like my so, kids are like teenagers. So I've got a kid in grade 11 and a kid in grade 10. And so the conversation it's is similar. Yeah. Tell us like, about what's that. What's your take thing? on that? Do you feel like you're responsible for that? I think I, I'm willing to pay half is my, like, I've been saving for their education for a long time, mm -hmm. but I'm not paying the full thing. Like I'm paying half. If, if your university is 5k, I'll pay, I'll meet you halfway. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not going to pay it all. There's no way. Like to me, that doesn't make sense. It's like, 
there's no they're not invested yeah vested little right? skin in the game yeah like, like they have that. to have a little skin in the game and yeah. it's it's like but i also am i also do remember like the grief of knowing nobody could was helping me mm -hmm. like i you know what i mean like but i'm like i'm not willing to go all the way but i'm also i do think as a parent it, it's for me to contribute mm -hmm. is something I want to do. And it's not maybe right. that I feel like I have to, I don't feel like I have to, I mean, my kids get great grades, maybe they could get scholarships, whatever, that's fine. But I just feel like I really wish I'd had someone that I could have asked. Sure. You well, know, I mean, or even support, just the internet. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, but, but yeah, even yeah. the internet now, these kids can look, I mean, my daughter specifically can look and get information. We didn't even know about concurrent enrollment. You didn't know, there was a lot of things you didn't know. I didn't know I could graduate from high school early until just, I just happened yeah. to ask my counselor some weird question. He goes, oh yeah, if you just get these couple extra English credits, you can leave here oh. early. And I'm like, Rrr. yeah, I don't yeah know but that. nobody's telling the students this stuff. Yeah. They're just mindlessly going through school and then they mindlessly go to college and like there's no yeah. there's no information for them out there, right? We were lost exactly. for sure, certainly. So well, it's like yeah, because like I'm an entrepreneur, my their dad, I'm divorced, but their dad is an entrepreneur. So it's been interesting because neither one of all of my I three kids, none of them, I shouldn't say neither one of them, none of them have ever seen a parent who has a job. Mm -hmm. So they're used to this like parents around like mm -hmm. yes i can drive to the field trip sure i'll come to that event in the middle of sure, the day flexibility on right yeah. you know like mm -hmm. they're very yeah. used to they've never like i remember a couple of years ago because i really only work while my kids are at school like even now like even now that they're big i mm -hmm. still really only work while they're at school and they're like what do you do exactly <laughs> like do you have a job like right. what do you do like I remember you talk, a, couple of years you talk ago, a big game mom but <laughs> Friends at school are wondering, are you, uh, what are you doing? Are you a drug okay? dealer? <laughs> yeah, yeah I know. No, it was like, because they would ask me, like, because their friends would need a ride somewhere. And I was like, yeah, sure. And my, you know, my son started this club and he needed parent drivers and parent volunteers. And I was like, I'm in. It was like a hiking club and I love outdoor mm -hmm. stuff. So oh, I was like, dang. I'm in. And so I'm like there, I'm driving, I'm like, you know, doing the thing. And they're like, what do you do that you're available at like three o'clock on a Tuesday mm -hmm. afternoon? Like, <laughs> always. And I'm right. like, you know, like, I don't know. I just said it up like question. that. So speaking right? of that, what, what, what do you do? Let's, this is a great transition. Yeah, so let's dive into your that. business is coaching. You're focused <laughs> on helping solopreneurs. Okay. Which is a very specific thing. And I know mm -hmm. some people in this space that are very powerful that I follow. Uh, well, one of them specifically with one man business and Dan Co. I don't know if you know him, but mm -hmm. anyway, c can you share some strategies or a little bit of insight? that you provide to your clients to help them achieve this balance. And I think I know what you're going to say. Um, sure. To be a solopreneur is a very special thing, right? Because it has some mm -hmm. certain nuances. And so yeah. let's dive into the how you see solopreneurship and how you project sure. it to your followers. And then let's dive into the, the things that are different about it that you can share with our listeners. Sure. So to, there's a lot of questions there. So I'll go back for a second. So my quote unquote day job is I run a tech business. I run a tech company. I run a web development, custom web development. You hear that kids? Mom <laughs> runs a tech company. Okay. <laughs> That's why she can do the hike. Okay? I run out. <laughs> uh, yeah. Right. So guys, just so you know, like for the last 10 years, I have been running a tech business. So no. So by day, I about 20 hours a week, maybe on a good week, I run a custom web development tech business. Um, about four years ago, during COVID, I started volunteering with a women in business organization. And it's just I just felt really compelled to like, just contribute, you know, to my community. And I was going through my application process with the mentor team. And I was like, and they're like, Oh, well, what do you make? And I'm like, well, I run this business 20 hours a week, I pay myself like, I don't know, I think last year, I paid myself like 115,000, not sales, but like my my draw my income. Mm -hmm. And they were like, sales, I'm like, no, not sales. Like my, my income was, I live in Vancouver. It's a very expensive city. Six figures means like you have no money. So anyway, but anyway, so I had paid myself as a mom, a six figure income. And they were like, Oh my God, like, what is that? Like most women don't even sell six figures, let alone pay themselves six figures. Right. Mm -hmm. So I then at that point started a business coaching, which is what I do outside of my, my quote unquote day mm -hmm. job, if you want to call it a day job. And so solopreneurship is the reason why, because the people always ask me the question is like, how do you pull that off? Like, how do you do that without working these long days? Right. And I was like, the key to being the key to it 
is if you're a solopreneur and you want to work less, you have to stop being a solopreneur. <laughs> like you need a team, mm -hmm. you need people. Like you cannot work enough hours to get everything done mm -hmm. when you're running a small business. It's like, a massive undertaking. It, yeah. You cannot, it's not possible. And so to me, um, because I run a tech business, but I am not a tech person. I've never built a website in my life, but we do these custom, custom, fancy, fancy stuff. I've had a team literally since day one. Mm -hmm. um, like I've had, I think my first hire was like a bookkeeper. My second hire, or sorry, my first hire was a web developer. My second Take hire was notes, a bookkeeper. Guys. First hire is a bookkeeper. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. Don't do your own money. That's like, oh my God. People who oh, do no, we're, books, we're a like... profitable company. Uh, it doesn't look like it in here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, you're don't do your own money. yourself six figures? Well, <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. God. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I was very, the first time I tried to remit my sales taxes to the government, I was like, this is not happening. So, <laughs> I called. Mm -hmm. so, you know, I think my first hire was a web developer. My second hire was a bookkeeper. I've had an assistant since day, like literally from the first year, mm -hmm. um, like a virtual assistant. And you're talking and then, about finding these people where just you're, you look, you put an ad out or you find them on a website, Upwork, Fiverr. That's like, a great what question. Are you doing? Yeah. Um, it depends. I mean, my first, re my first line of attack is always to get a referral. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to like put it to my network. Hey, I'm looking for this. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if I can't find that through my network, then I'm, I, I love Upwork personally. Mm -hmm. Like. I I'm think, working with some guys in Upwork right now. Yeah, That's why I it's asked. Great. I'm like, okay, so what was your experience there too? Yeah. yeah. If you know what you're doing, like in a past life, I was a recruiter for like eight mm -hmm. years. So I I know what I'm doing. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like I know how to write the proposal. I know how to filter. I know how to interview. I know how to test projects together. I know how to onboard. So I those, know how are to... You, those are your skills there. Yeah, for oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. No, Superpowers. Yeah. Super That's power. one of my questions, yeah. actually. I'm awesome going to, I'm going to pause you right there only because sure. that's a powerful space for people. Okay. Yeah. When you're yeah, going yeah. on Upwork, like say one of our, our listeners is like, okay, well, great idea. I'm going to go get all my answers done on Upwork. Listen, that not everyone yeah. on Upwork is a qualified individual. Okay. You do actually need to no. kind of know what you need first. You need to sort of have your skill set and correct me if I'm wrong, Natasha. Yeah. You need to have your skill set in order to know what that they're going to deliver. Right. And then oh, yeah. deliverables, right. They have to be crystal clear on deliverables, right. 100%. A lot of them want to say hourly, but you got to be able to manage that space or you can be 100%. easily taken advantage or left just holding the bag. Basically. Am I oh, wrong yeah. about this? No, hundred percent. I like to explain it like this and you might want to edit this out after the, the call, but it's like, <laughs> I, this is how Hashtag I explain upwork, it. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag. No, but this is my philosophy and this is, it's very bad wording, but everybody knows what I mean. When you're hiring, you got to go in like a sniper. You got to know what you want. You got to know exactly what you want. You got to like, you are looking for a specific person. Like you are looking for a certain type of availability, communication style, personality, skill set, like cultural fit. Like, like when I go to hire somebody, it's not like a hope and pray. It's mm -hmm. like, I know what I want. I am right. hunting and finding this person to do this thing, to do this thing in this time frame, at this rate, on these hours, in this way. All right. So back up on, yeah. on this, on this, this, do this task Yeah. in this time frame yeah. for this amount. Yeah. Right. So yeah. these are very powerful things. So you got to get that stuff in order and maybe N Natasha can help you with that as well, guys. Yeah. So reach out to her in this space. Totally. This is essentially what you're teaching people this is how what to I navigate do. this Team space, building. right? Okay. Yeah. Like, for example, like, like the reason why, like I've done a lot of work with the solopreneurs because solopreneurs generally, they can make good money, you know, but they're working 40, 50, 60 plus hours a week. They're feeling guilty. They don't see their kids. They're burnt out. They probably have insomnia. Like it's a very stressful thing. Like you can't go on vacation because money stops. And so it's a really like, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear on this podcast, but it's like a yeah. really <laughs> shitty way to live. You it's, like see the name, really, didn't you? <laughs> it's like a really shitty way to live. Like, and so it's like the first thing is I'm like, look, we need to free up like 10, 20 hours a week. Mm -hmm. Like, and that is not hard. Like you can do that in a week. 
Like, okay, so let's talk about this. This is a big part of my principles. Yeah. And I, I love that you said this. You got a lot of hot topics here, by the way, for our listeners. I've been doing this a long well, time. My primary goal is to free up people's time, money, and yep. mental energy, okay? That's oh, how yeah. you become an entrepreneur, not just a business owner, okay? Totally. Business owner can be basically owned by his own business. So 100%. to be a real entrepreneur, you got to be able to step back. So how does one find... I have some strategies that I teach, but I'm curious from your perspective, mm -hmm. using this strategy and any other ones that you can think of to free up time, money, and mental energy to scale from where you're currently at or just to get that back so you can have a life with a little bit of purpose in it, right? Oh, my God. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, tell, me, tell us about that. And that's Dig my in. mission, too. That's my mission, too. It's like I, I personally am anti-hustle culture. I hate the, the like I was saying before, I hate this idea that is sold that if you're not stressed and anxious and in pain and bleeding, mm -hmm. you're not doing it right. I hate that. I hate mm -hmm. that so much. Like I'm, I'm a anti hustle culture as well. Like <laughs> I hate like, it. It's not you true. You don't have to work until you fall down That's face first in your true. bed every night. Like I've been through a divorce where I was married to someone who was a workaholic, living that culture, and it just, it just like, it's not an either or. To me, this whole idea of okay, build your business and then hope your wife is still there ten years later. It's not true. Oh, it's not gonna happen, so right? It's actually kind of sad. It's so yeah. sad. And I've like been through that. And I and I was bought in that that is the path. And then you wake up and you're like living with a roommate, you don't even know each other. And right. it's just I've done I've walked that road. Like I have been through that life. And then also I grew up with a parent who was like never around. And, and so I've, I haven't seen my dad in 20 years and it's because there's no connection, you know? And I'm mm -hmm. like, you don't get a second chance with your relationships. Like your kids do not understand mommy's busy. Not cool. Like, you well, yeah, your kids definitely under, don't understand it. They have, they they can't even get their head around it. They're like, no, you don't understand like... it at all, mom. All these other people like, there's something going on here and we're going to find out. But okay? there's this myth, right? Like there's this myth. And I used to like follow this guy on, on like TikTok or something. Remember, not TikTok, but like, sorry, like whatever it was, social media at the time. This was before mm -hmm. TikTok. And he was like, your kids don't want to hang with you. They want to go to Disneyland. And like, they want the money to go to Disneyland. I'm like, that is bullshit. Like your kids care if you're around. Like, like last night, my son was working on this puzzle and he's just like, he was getting so tired and it was like 11 o'clock at night and he'd like been working on this puzzle all day and he was almost done. He's like, mom, just like sit with me. Just like just keep me Aww. awake while I finish this puzzle. And I'm like exhausted. Right? I'm like, I don't want to do this. I want to go to bed. I don't want to do this. watch you do this puzzle. This is boring as hell. Right. But that the, your family, your, they need their family. They need you to be there. They need you to be around. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, so adamant with that. And it's like, you don't get to be like, Hey, mommy's putting her head down for 10 years to build this business so we can be rich and live in this beautiful house and you can have your own car that's 10 years gone. Sure. And so well, I'm going to like, get absolutely. like, in my opinion. So it's like, least, you have to have both. You have to least, do both. Why don't you, you, why don't you share with her your take on that? That's just a good spot for you because Lisa believes that like, then she had to go through this the hard way too, is that your relationship early on is yeah. the, is how you're going to know if your kids come and visit you after they have a choice. Exactly. Exactly. Do they want to hang right? with you? Right. So those yeah. early years, even if it's just absolute nonsense, you're basically just saying, I'm going to sit here and we'll do this puzzle with you so that you'll come visit me yeah. you know, when you're 22. Right. Yeah. Because they're, at that point, they'll have their whole own lives. They'll have their whole, all this other stuff going on. And yeah. they'll have to consciously choose to come and visit you. Like it won't be easy. Do they'll they be limited want... on time too. Yeah. hundred percent. Mm -hmm. It's like, so do tell you us have about that. Least, connection? Did you? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's just, it's exactly all about, you know, just being present while they are there. Yeah. Just, just keeping, I mean, for me that it was the same, you know, like it was all about, like, I, I had to be involved in my kids' lives and volunteer at school yeah. and, and all of that. So I had to do what I had to do to like make that happen, you know? And yeah. like, and now yeah. like I have amazing relationships with my kids. They're both grown and like, yeah, I just wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> you can't but yeah. the thing is is a lot of people i think think that they can just pick that back up when the business yeah. is built and i'm like no 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 mm -hmm. no it's over well, and there might even be resentment so even if you oh, want to pick it back up God. they're like no, whatever it's over yeah. mm -hmm. it's, it's i mean yeah. you might need to like you might be able to fix it but not really like it's yeah. it happens yeah. when they're at home Okay, so this is a big, heavy deal right now, right? Yeah. Because you're basically saying, listen, you have got to find balance. And 
what we as entrepreneurs want, I think in our space, Lisa and, and Natasha, and I think we all align on this. There's, we're not, we're the different kind. Okay. We're the kind that says we're doing yeah. this so that we can do these things, right? This is our reward, right? Yeah. It's not about, you know, we want to, we want to create this environment that's conducive to our long-term goals. Mm -hmm. It's not, a, we could be way richer. Okay. We both, we yeah, all know it, exactly. okay? but can make way more it money. doesn't, that doesn't align with my long-term goal. So that long-term yeah. goal is very, very important. So I love that that's your philosophy as well. I think for any of you listeners who are looking to become entrepreneurs and you have some delusion of that money's going to solve all your problems, it honestly, no. I'm I'm not going to be the only person that tells you this, but it's not true at all because yeah. Lisa and I have seen it come and go. Yeah. But we always ask the question now, if first of all, if we had all the money we wanted, would that change this? And then if we didn't have the money, would this change this, right? Yeah. So you have to remove money from the equation uh, yeah. every once in a while just to see you're making ethical decisions for yourself, for your mm -hmm. personal, like I gained weight one year. I took this position where I was on the phone a lot and I end up gaining weight and I'm like, listen, it, I don't care that I'm making this money right now. I'm, this isn't good for me. No. I'm not happy with 100%. myself. The, the money's here and it's in the bank account, but look 100%. at me, I'm, I'm miserable, right? Oh God, yeah. You can't pay me for, and you're just paying yourself to be miserable. Basically, you can't right? Buy that back, you? right? You can't yeah. buy your health back. No. Like, you know, Steve Jobs would have done it. Like you can't. And, and right. it's just like, I always look at it. Like if I, it's exactly like what you're saying, Chad, it's like, okay, let's just say there's no doubt. I mean, there is no doubt that if you don't have kids, you can build a bigger business way faster. There's no doubt about mm -hmm. it. Like you can't argue that. However, I'm like, okay, if I build this ginormous company, let's say, but my family relationships are a disaster that, to me, that's a fail. Absolutely. It's Tony Robbins will say the same thing. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. it's a failure. Like if I have these kids, like for example, like going back to my, my dad, like six kids, there's six of us, right? None of us have seen my dad in 20 years. That, wow. what is that? You know what I mean? Like, it's just, none of us have any interest. He's never met any of his grandchildren. Like there's nine grandchildren. He's never met any of them. None of us have any interest even like, and he lives not far away, you know, but none of us are like, we're like, it's not there. Choosing, because remember, like, you have to choose to go there. That's the point, exactly. right? You have and to it's make just that like, choice. And this is what we're talking about. Yeah, this is a big that's topic. That's what I mean. And, and so to me, I'm like, if that was my life, I don't care how much money I have. That's a fail. And the right. domino of that to my kids, to their kids, like, oh, my God. Like, so to me, I've All been right. on that other side. <laughs> no, no, we're just, we're the whole world. The, this is it. It's over. No, but it's Six a domino, right? Later. No, I know. Yeah. I'm totally like, messing with you. It's like, yeah. I'm the first dom. Let's just say, like, I always look at it like, okay, if I, if this was me now, okay, my, you know, my, I have, let's say I haven't seen my parent, my dad because of whatever, and it just, it's irrelevant and whatever, but it's like, okay, I can fix this now. I can be a different, like, and it's like, like I was saying about my, my partner, like I'm a better mom because of that, like unfortunate as it was and as sad as it was, I am a, I am an excellent parent. I know I am like, I am an excellent, excellent parent. So I have great kids. I have three teenage well, Certainly kids. when it comes to having the time, right. Yeah. Investing the time and the energy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, but I Connection. have great kids. Like mm -hmm. my kids are great in school. They want to hang out with me. Like I have teenage sons and they, they're, they're having their friends come here for new year's Eve to hang out and play board games with their mom. Like I'm not, you know, like they do so sports. Yep. Nice work. <laughs> but How I have cool great kids, you know? Yeah. And that's yeah, what I mean. Yeah. It's like, I have great kids. And like, it's not just me. If people are like, well, know me. They're like, damn, like your kids are pretty cool. Like, mm -hmm. and, and so it's not just me saying that, but it's like, this is very intentional. Like this is not an so, accident, right? Right. But so when people say I do this for my kids and I hear it all the yeah. time, they make bad decisions for their children sometimes. Yeah. Like, I, like you said, like, they feel like they need, like your dad, maybe he went to work. My, my parents were working class heroes too. The yeah. most consistent, same place, same corner, same street, every, they just the same road every single mm -hmm. day. But you know, these guys, they, that's the way they were raised. Remember we're in a different time yeah. right now too. And like they, those guys didn't have access to the information that we did. And even us, these new aspiring entrepreneurs right now, that yeah. if they're in their early stages of their journey, what's the advice you'd give someone? I know we're giving the advice on family and keep balance. Okay. So that's yeah. a, a really important thing, guys. So How? if you have a notebook right now, write it really big on one page and then turn the page. Cause that's a whole topic. Yeah. And that's a whole part of the world. You have to identify what we call your 
non-negotiables. Yeah. Okay. The, it's these things that you will not you will not give up for success, right? Yeah. Or money specifically. Okay. Yeah. So for you, if especially if people are juggling family responsibilities, now I teach about all this type of you know steal your life back, fire your boss, live a life yeah. full of purpose. Yeah. That alignment for you and your coaching style, um, I think it aligns really really well with you. How does one kind of get back this? or even educate themselves maybe on um, cuz they if they want to be in the safe zone okay so this is the popular thing yep. most people want to stay in the safe zone while tiptoeing out into the realm of entrepreneurship right but that's yep. a scary transition yep. do you have some specific advice for them like i'm curious while they're balancing family right because not just it's not just you yep. that's going to live in a box on the side of the street it's you and your kids <laughs> I right understand so that. i am the only breadwinner in my family <laughs> I can't, I <laughs> and it might be tough for you because you you haven't made that transition specific, but I'm sure you can relate enough to 100%. maybe help our listeners who are early to this stage. How do we get them to tiptoe out and start taking that that journey, right? Building the skill sets, whatever. Tell, well, tell me what no, I can definitely are. speak to this because like I'll just throw it back to where my partner's at. Like he's this union guy, but he doesn't. He would love to run his own business, and so he's aspiring. He's he's aspiring. Yeah, he works like seasonal. Like the weather in Canada is kind of a, a mess sometimes. So when it's, the weather's really bad, he doesn't work. Like he's up, you know, and that's very common if you work in like construction or anything like like related to that field, right? So on his down days, he's he's constantly running ideas by me about could I do this and what about this and what about this and I want to start. He wants to. Mm. He wants like he's and dreaming. It, and it's and yep. it's like I get it. Like his heart is so wanting he's like a wantpreneur wantpreneur can i pause you right there <laughs> yeah no that's true it is it is someone who wants it and probably a lot more people are dreaming about it right but yeah. and that's an interesting space ask yourself in that moment if this is you do you think that will ever stop or will you die thinking yeah. i and i'll give you a quick story and I, and then i want you to continue cuz that's sure. a really good space right where you're going with your your partner mm -hmm. i had a truck driver once and I said, you know, oh gosh, that's crazy. You want to start this business and get into real estate investing. It's amazing. Yeah. How long have you been thinking about doing that? Exactly. Oh, I've been watching these videos, Chad, in my truck for, exactly. for 20 years and I've always wanted to get into I said, yeah. And I said, okay, well, great, man. You know, we went down, figured out what he really wanted. And I said, okay, well, let's get you started. Let's maybe yeah. get you toward your first real estate deal. And he goes, you know, I'm going to think about it. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, you've been spending 20 years yeah. thinking about it. Okay, so that's where I want to, yeah. why I wanted to pause you. Yeah, yeah. Are you that person? And if you are listening right now, Natasha, what she's about ready to say now, hopefully, will be groundbreaking. So I should well, really set the stage for you there. Groundbreaking. Because if you're that person, you have to ask yourself how many years has it been mm -hmm. that you felt that way and been thinking that way, right? So with your partner, tell us what more. Yeah. So this is the one thing that I know because a lot of people like. The thing about entrepreneurship that people think, they think that you have to be, and, and I'm I'm going to speak only, I can only speak with him as a reference. He is mm -hmm. way smarter than me. Okay. He has way more talent than me at so many things. He is so much more, like he's a way harder worker than me. He works construction. Mm -hmm. Like I work from a computer, like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? He is a way harder worker, way smarter, way more dedicated, way more disciplined. Problem solver, all that kind of all stuff. All that. Yeah. Inc the skill is not the problem. Right. What makes the difference is your courage. I am yeah. way more ballsy than him. <laughs> I am like way more, I'm way braver. And he would admit this. So if he hears this later, he's not going to be mad at me. Yeah. Yeah. But well, it's like, he'll be watching. We're I am, <laughs> hey, man, just, but it's like, I am way more courageous than him. I am mm -hmm. way more willing to take a risk and put myself out there and fail than him. Uh -huh. That is the X factor. Because mm -hmm. people who people think you got to be different to be an entrepreneur. It's like, no, 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 no. You just got to be fucking brave as hell. And kind of believe in yourself. Bravery comes from yeah. believing that you're capable of solving anything that is thrown at you or just never giving up. Those are the two kind of categories. Yeah, no, but I, I see. I agree with that. But I also disagree because when you're starting, you don't know if you're going to make it. You don't, no, you, you have don't. no idea. Well, you probably won't. So just so you, <laughs> you know, the won't. odds are pretty yeah. much stacked against you. So, so, so what you I have recommend. to just... Yeah, so, go ahead. No, so what I recommend is this. I'm like, to me, because I've been self-employed, like I said, entrepreneur since I was a little kid, mm -hmm. is knowing how much courage and gutsiness and risk um, it takes to do it is, is you got to build your resilience. 
So he's mm -hmm. got all so these. So you can that, you can build that as a skill. You're saying, yeah, Is that what I'm hearing? exactly. So okay. for example, so he has all these really cool ideas, like really cool ideas that any one of them would be successful. However, mm -hmm. he won't start, and he won't take so that he's first not step. Not this resilience or this no. So kind I'm of like tough skin. So what I said to him, I'm like, first, hey, why don't you just do something simple, like something like, like a gig, drive for mm -hmm. Uber, drive for Skip the Dishes, drive like do something, work for like. Um, there's like task rabbit. You can go and like, mm -hmm. and I'm like, just practice what it feels like. No mm -hmm. risk, no marketing required. Mm -hmm. Like just get in the vibe. I love that advice. Of what it feels yeah. like to like be in control and, yes. and be in a situation where like even something as simple as driving for Uber, like customer service skills, communication, like being like, or, or whatever it is, like you're always going to be well, in new environments you're just, something you're different. On your own. Yeah. You're mm -hmm. on your own. No one's writing the check for you. No one's telling you what to do. I mean, it's like resilient, like courage, I would say, and most people would say is the number one trait of an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. um, we learn as we go, you know, we're like, oh, there's a bridge. Let's just jump and see what happens. Like, that's just how we do things. And, and that mm -hmm is a very uncommon. So if you're like more of a job person, like I'm just gonna use him as a reference. They don't do that. Like you don't just jump into something and, Oh, let's see what happens. Right. So it's kind of like, for me, whenever I talk to him about this, I'm like, okay, let's not talk about building this really cool app idea that he has too big, mm -hmm. way too big. Mm -hmm. Let's make a profile with Amazon flex and use our car to pick up and deliver packages in your off days and just see if you can get yourself out of bed when no one's telling you to be anywhere and manage your own time, manage your energy. Mm -hmm. I mean, the thing about driving for, for example, being driving for Uber, I mean, I know it makes no money, so it's not about the money, but it's about, it's about the attitude. Like you gotta be mm -hmm. happy. You gotta be chatty. Mm -hmm. You gotta be customer service. You well, gotta you be organized. You almost need to know how to have a side hustle kind yeah. of all the time. All the time. Yeah. Just always oh, some yeah. other thing, right? Cause even as an entrepreneur, I know this lease, you can probably validate every business that we jump into. We always have some other like little thing we're doing on the side. Like even yeah. though we're doing this thing over yeah. here, we got a house flip going on over here. Like, exactly. There's always some yeah. little side hustle going on, right? I think that's the perfect so, way to start is like, because it's so easy. Like, like if we've, you've probably heard this expression a million times, like ideas are a dime a dozen. An idea is worth nothing. Mm -hmm. An idea is worth nothing. Like how many of us Zero. could come up with Tesla? Okay, that's a million of us could have come up with an electric car idea. Mm -hmm. You gotta do it. And it's yeah. kind of like, and I look at it like that first step is always so hard. Like the first step, that first domino is the hardest one. But like, once you've kind of got like, I remember one afternoon he and I sat down and he was just kind of complaining about whatever it was doing. He's like, oh, I'm so bored or blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know what? Shut up. Okay. We are going to fill in this profile right now. We are going to mm -hmm. fill in this profile. We're going to pull your driver's abstract. We're going to like do all this stuff. And we literally, I forced him to sit on the couch and like that first step of like getting the profile up is the hardest. And then once you're kind of in it, you're like, okay, we're moving, we're moving, we're moving, yeah. we're moving. But it's like, so for people who have never run a business before and never been an entrepreneur before, you have to like, you, you go from being a receiver to being a creator. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and sure. that is very weird when you're in this mindset that no one is coming to save you. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. You have to create this from zero. Right. It's a lot of accountability. Yeah. When something goes wrong, you want to blame someone else, but you can't like you, you, yeah. it, was, it was all on you. Yeah. And for those of us who are entrepreneurs, that. we love that. We love that we're in control. We love creating and we love that hey, if it amen. wins and the fail, it's all on us. And, and we're okay with that. We know that. But if you're used to showing up for a job and someone gives you a paycheck and you don't really have to do anything other than have your body there and do the thing they're paying you to do, mm -hmm. needing to that scrappy courage failure looks stupid in something new. I think that's the reason people don't because they don't want to look stupid for doing it wrong. And it's like, I think once you understand that an entrepreneur, it's all about looking stupid. <laughs> Right. Well, no, like, yeah. It's well, like that's what no I always, knows. I always say that too. You know, it's like 
as an entrepreneur, um, you know, cause I coach people on like starting bookkeeping businesses and I'm like, yeah. you have to get comfortable with making mistakes and oh, like, yeah. you're going to make mistakes too, least, right? Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Not 100%. knowing and like, and then knowing how to figure it out, you know, and be willing to figure it out. You don't have somebody that's oh, going to yeah. figure it out for you. Exactly. And I think that's the reason people don't try is because they're like, like your example of your, the, your, your colleague or client who's a truck driver. Okay. He is probably excellent at driving a truck. Um, and new skills, something different, real estate, that is very different. Mm -hmm. And you can do the Dan Grossi OC. You can like take all the courses, you can do all the stuff and have the money saved and have your investors or whatever you're doing, but it's new. It, mm -hmm. The margin for error is incredibly high unless you have a coach or someone who's actually like helping you, right? It Which can is help. Yeah, for sure. Get a coach, get a hundred percent, get a coach. Like, don't... Well, it just eliminates a lot of mistakes. It okay, does. That's what the coaching is all about. Yeah. It's just oh like, listen, God. you want to make all the mistakes? Don't do it alone. Yeah. Get a coach. hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. Get a coach. Like do not, you do not have to like, nothing is new. Well, well Everyone has done guys... what you do. Yeah. And then I want to just touch on this just for yeah. an example. Please. Everyone knows this. Okay. And you, everyone already actually knows the answer. When you start something new, you have no idea what you're doing. Get on a skateboard right now if you've Nobody never ridden does. one. Okay, exactly. it's not exactly. going to happen. Okay, L if you write with your right hand, just grab a pencil. <laughs> write with your left hand. There's a good chance exactly. you suck. Right. Oh, yeah. So that's the same thing. Just start the thing. Yeah. And let's say you get really good at writing with your left hand, aka starting a side hustle. Okay. Yeah. But it then doesn't fulfill you, right? So like, fine. Okay. Well, I'm yeah. not going to do that. I'm going to write with my toes. This is fulfilling, right? You have yeah. to just go down this journey of like trying things you have no idea about because yeah. and the only reason you're doing this by the way and the only reason you're listening to the show right now and, and listening to natasha's stories is because you are that person with that voice in your head okay yeah. you don't listen to stuff like this and you don't even think about even none of this would even be in your algorithm if it, yeah. you already weren't that person who just needs to be nudged off the fence yeah right exactly. you're it's already a calling inside you right and you just have to kind of talk to yourself and say, like, I know this sounds schizophrenic, but you have to have a conversation <laughs> you with do. yourself and yeah. say, listen, I am, I am going to go do that one thing. Like she said, just yeah. go do something small, something right? Small. And small, then small. just build up a tolerance, learn some, just make some mistakes because exactly. the people you'll meet and then you'll learn some stuff for sure. Yeah. So no, we're, getting, exactly. we're getting strapped on time here. Oh, um, good. Natasha, we want to make sure that everyone can find you and I want to be them to be crystal clear. And now if you love what she's saying <laughs> and you love her philosophies, I want them to be crystal clear on what you offer. Okay. Sure. Because, you know, if they want to reach out, let's tell us a little bit more about that. Well, what I'll probably do is just cause I can drop my, I'll put my email, I'll send it to you so you can put it in the show notes, but it's like mm -hmm. what I do generally is when I have, okay, well, if someone is already are we assuming, Chad, that this is like a job person wanting to be self-employed, like wanting to start a business well, or is this a solo see, preneur? Fire Your Boss Fridays, the whole idea behind it is to take back your time, money, and yeah. mental energy, fire your boss, and then live a life full of purpose, which it, it, essentially, it, it feels like it should happen all at once, but it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't. okay? But... But that kind of theory is that like they're in that transition from like, okay, well, I want to fire my boss, but yeah. I have no idea how to get to that point. And then to, because eventually I want my life to be more purposeful, right? Mm -hmm. I want to be an intentional life by design kind of person, yeah. right? So I want, you, if you can, t these listeners are in that transition. Yes. So to answer your question directly. Okay. So perfect. So, okay. In that, on that case, I would say if you're in the uh, job starting a business, just keep like, try something like we talked about, like that's not really the clientele that I work with, but it's like, just follow the advice of this podcast, like try something, gig something, like mm -hmm. build that muscle of, of learning how to be responsible for your own results. Okay. And let's say they find this thing and they're like, you know what? I think I figured it out. And I took your advice and it's six months from now. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Where, where, where do they line up with you? Okay. I'm curious too. So what so I do just for me, you know, what I do is I would then, um, probably one of my first hires would be send them to Lisa. <laughs> so I'd be like, <laughs> once you're self-employed and you're solopreneur, let's say this gig works out and now you're busy mm -hmm. and you yep. are like working. You're like, Oh my God, I need a day off. My offer as a coach is I do, Hey, look, in, I take two weeks and I'm like, let's free up a minimum of 10 hours mm -hmm. and I can get that locked and in and done within two weeks. Like we will have okay. a person That's on the job, ha helping you 
So you are now, you've got that 10 hours. And do you take a percentage of like, okay, so your time's worth what? <laughs> I mean, I do, I do a and flat I'm going to give you 10 hours so a week and you're going to pay me for the whole year in advance. <laughs> no, no, what I'm I totally do kidding. though, no, that's, a, that's a good idea. I like that actually. Um, <laughs> what I do actually is I'm like, no, I just charge a flat rate. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, look, this is look, like, because I really do believe that people, I mean, this is a whole other conversation, but it's like, no one should work on their weaknesses. So if you have mm -hmm. something, everyone in our businesses, we all have things that we're terrible at, like me with my good bookkeeping, mm -hmm. I'm like, that had to go. So we identify, okay, where are, where is your weakest link here? Mm -hmm. what, what has to go? Let's hire someone there, get them in. First two weeks is like finding love, them, onboarding love, love, them. Love <laughs> we all know this, right? Like we've all tried yeah, to I do our own books. Too. <laughs> oh yeah. I spent the last, well, basically the last, <gasps> uh, well, since I married Lisa, I've realized all of my weaknesses. Yeah, so that's why we got married, to point right? Out, but <laughs> that's I, good I kid, though. But, but um, yeah, I, I love that advice, Natasha. That's solid, solid advice. So that's about, what I do is I just help them yeah. get someone in place. I my I know a lot of people will do like fractional. They come in and do the thing. Like my goal is, I think team building is a skill that every mm -hmm. entrepreneur needs to have. So it's like. I teach you, it's not like I'm just going to go place somebody on your team. It's like, I'm going to teach you how to do this. Like, mm -hmm. how do you get an awesome, because it's not about hiring. It's about hiring someone awesome. Like mm -hmm. hiring for the sake of hiring is a big headache and a nightmare, but it's like, how do we get someone awesome in this role? And so mm -hmm. I teach you end to end how I've done it. Um, in my own business. Is it a video recorded? Is this just one? It's live. On one we do it together. Yeah. yeah, we do it together because it's like, everyone's got a different skill, a different personality. Mm -hmm. So much of hiring is like to your personality. So I mm -hmm. help them figure out, okay, what works with you and what doesn't like, I know for me with my personality, there's certain things I cannot deal with that other mm -hmm. people can. And, and knowing that helps me hire smarter. Right. So we, um, like you got to know where your OCD, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So, I mean, you got to know yourself you know know. because that yeah. is, it's going to shine either way. I mean, you're going to, yeah. you're going to see your weaknesses come through for yeah. sure. Definitely. So that's so. what we do is, yeah, the first two weeks is let's get someone on board. And then the second two weeks is I teach you, okay, like a lot of people who are sole soul partners. I've never been a manager. They've never been a leader. So I do like mm -hmm. a crash course in like, okay. So you're, you're giving someone the opportunity to manage or lead their own life right in that yeah. sense right For, by yeah. using and utilizing leveraging other people's time and 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 such okay. yeah exactly. now, so, do you have a problem telling people what they're weak at oh my god <laughs> do you think i would <laughs> does my uh, vibe you know, communicate I think you need like... to hire someone to do this now that i've had you on oh, the phone here oh my for... god no i am i'm very people tell my clients tell me all the time we hired you because you're no bullshit and i'm like i used to feel embarrassed about that but now i'm like you know what no you kind like, of have to be time is realm, money right? man in like time space, is money yeah. Like, let's just cut the crap and let's just be adults. And I'm not mean. Like people tell me all the time, they're like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, it's like, you're fair, but you're definitely, you don't pull your punches. And I was like, but I, I see to me, I like that kind of coaching. Like personally, mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, I don't I need the sandwich. Yeah. Just tell me, like, let's just fix it. Well, we actually, we don't have time for anything else as entrepreneurs. So we like it that way. So. Yeah. I just feel like, let's just get results, man. It's like, yeah. I, and I'm never, like I said, I'm not, and I think we all know what we're bad at. Like, like last, right. last month I heard a yeah, full time. But we don't want to tell other people. <laughs> but, we, but you know, like, you'll know. You're like, yeah, I know, I know, but no, I'm not telling you that. No. Or it's like, another way to look at it is like, if you, if they don't want to admit they're bad at it is like, what do you hate? Like in right. my, in that my business. Be another angle. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. you're making a safe zone for them. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, like I'm in my kidding. business, I hate document management. Like I'm a professional project manager, like PMP. I've got like tons of certifications for project management and stuff. But it's like, I am terrible at project admin, like tracking passwords and files. And like, I'm just so bad at that. So it's like, I have a full-time project management assistant that helps me because mm -hmm. I, that does that for you. Yeah. I am cool. not, it's not, that, it's not that I'm not, I just, I hate it. I hate it so much. So it's like, okay, let's, um, we need someone here and, uh, it's just this relief, cool. right? Like, yeah. oh God. So, all right, Lisa, you're going to say something and I want to hear what this is. What do you got for us? Um, I was just curious, like, I would imagine a lot of people that come to you are probably a little fearful of like, you know, taking on more, because I know I see this in the bookkeeping world, right? Like where people will be like a solopreneur bookkeeper. And then I'm like, you need to build the business and hire bookkeepers, yeah. you know, to expand, yeah. but they're, they're fearful yeah. of like, they're like, well, that means I'm going to have to pay people, which means less money for me. And like, how do you get them through that transition or get them that mindset of like, you've got to do this to grow. Yeah. 
That's a great question. And, and I mean, I know we're at the end, but I can answer that in 10 seconds, but it's like, I look at it like to One, hire and not two. use that time. <laughs> I'm it's kidding. like no no it's just like i look at it too it's like yeah hiring people always look at the expense but it's like okay look in my i'll take my example of hiring this project management assistant okay let's i hire her for 30 hours a week that is now 30 hours of stuff that i can do to be way more profitable mm -hmm. so it's not well, that i might be better don't... at it than you so, oh, so you might better. take 30 hours but they'll do it in 15. exactly yeah. but the point being is like whatever time i'm outsourcing like in your example of hiring another bookkeeper or like a whatever someone like more data entry or whatever. Okay, mm -hmm. that if that frees up 10 hours of my life, I can look at my cash flow and realize, okay, Boom. do I do I yep. either use that to go to the gym? Can I afford to use that? Or no, can I use that 10 puzzles. hours? And we're going on hiking field trips. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or can I use that 10 hours to like lead gen money, like yeah. repeat business. Growing systems. your business, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you, you could, the idea is you would take that 10 hours and you could go make more money. Mm -hmm. It's Start not like- another side hustle. Whatever, right? It's, yeah. it's like- it should, my, my hiring should always be profitable. Always. If it costs money, you're doing it wrong. Amen. So, well said. There it was. It. You could have done it in three seconds. <laughs> if it costs you money, you're doing it wrong. You Thank could have you. done it way quicker. Thank you. So, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I love that. And um, I loved having you today, man. Well, and your stories. And, you, and you're definitely, I love your, your philosophies on family and that kind oh. of thing. And Lisa got in you some really too. good questions today. So, no, you guys um, are awesome. Before, so before we go, thank you. Thank you. If you could give your 18 year old self one piece of advice, what would it be? Oh my this gosh. Is the the pre-college babysitter <laughs> chick. What would you It would have been, let me think. Just like right have fun. Just you... relax and have yeah. fun. Just like enjoy the journey. Like the end. Don't sell yourself out for the end. Enjoy what you're doing as mm -hmm. you're doing it because you don't get today back. I'm gonna add to that. Have an end, have a goal. Yeah. But just don't make it everything. Okay. It, enjoy it the will path. Not fulfill it will not fill all those dead days in the yeah. past. Cool. Enjoy Great advice, path. Natasha. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, that's a wrap for today's episode, guys, Great. of Fire Your Boss Fridays. We had a ton of fun, and um, we actually, I think this had a ton of value packed into it. So we hope, Natasha, you go on to do bigger and better things, and you find all the time in the world to transform other people's lives through your outsourcing skill set. And we are hoping that you are now inspired to be dangerous and fearless entrepreneurs to steal your life back, fire your boss, and live with purpose. And don't forget to visit Natasha's website, freeupmytime.biz. It does doesn't say it any clearer, people, for more valuable insight. And if you enjoyed today's episode, please subscribe, of course, hit the buttons, leave us comments too, review, whatever you guys want to do. We'd love to hear from you. If you have questions, uh, put them in the comments um, and, you know, we'll make sure N Natasha gets back to you and, and uh, connects on that level as well. And stay fearless, stay authentic, keep striving for your dreams. This is Chad, Lisa, and Natasha. See you guys next Friday. Natasha won't be joining us. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you.